Thank you for watching a video that I know for you is very cringe. Seattle progressives are well aware that I consider UW's frontline activism destructive of the most powerful tool for resistance, which is education. It's almost like an ideological school bomb to me, what I call UW dialectical. Alexander Schultz and Eaton once said his obligation was to the living, not to the dead. He didn't have to say his obligation was to Russia because everybody knew that he was talking about Russia. My obligation, it will make you cringe, first is to American education. My views have been researched by a questing heart. I read Martha Gellhorn, who was criticized late in life for being too pro-Israel. And she said that she had witnessed the liberation of Daw Cow. For some of the people there, liberation had come too late. And for others, you could see from their odds that they would never be the same. Well, I grew up in a Holocaust survivor community. I have a Jewish brother. That's where the 10th spot of hiring a CUW dialectical. To me, it's just a fact, familial, and real. I feel about him as most people feel about their brothers. But I have often told people that I thought we should be more careful of Israel. That mania and fear from the terrors of what befell in Europe, European Jewry, would make too many of them unhinged and we needed to be much more careful than we were being, partly because I had tasted the lash and knew how cruel they are. I believe the idea that the state of Israel was regarded in some ways as a hospital after World War II. And you would think the people who'd resisted the ideologies and trauma and berserk armies of fascist Europe would assimilate and create laws that dramatize protection of minorities. That's what you would think. And the belief that that's what would be right was translated in the American imagination into the idea that that was what was real. And the hospitalization process saw us calling Israel a democracy, even as they lied, even as they attacked us within our own neighborhoods. We attributed it to trauma. We said that resisting them or trying to control them meaningfully was anti-Semitism. No, when no anti-Semitism existed. Now, this is absurd to think that Israel is a democracy. But if meaninglessness is the foundation of absurdity, it becomes absurd when people believe it is meaningful. In other words, meaninglessness wearing the mask or posing as meaning becomes absurd. That's why you laugh when you're bidden to cry, when you're faced with the idea of democracy as represented by Israel. It's because it's something that you belong in the hospital for believing. But it's something that came from a reasonable premise that people resisting Hitler would do all that they could to prevent the mentality that led to Hitler.
Now the Zionist gave me a book to read. That was then, This Is Now, which is a very revealing title. The moral of which was, I just wanted to make sure that I hated you. What they're doing to Gaza is their way of making sure that they hate the United States of America. They're making us an object lesson. Gaza is suffering all of the trauma and cruelty that can be unleashed by a Holocaust maniac. And Israel is saying, see, this is what you are, America. You won't even try to stop us. And when the shoe was on the other foot, you were the same way. That was then, this is now. I just wanted to be sure that I hated you. We should be careful of Israel's excuses, just as we have long should have been more careful of their mania.